I'm Doug Savage. I'm a neurosurgeon here in Southwest Florida. I've been here since 1991. This is Southwest Florida Neurosurgical Associates. There's five neurosurgeons and three pain doctors practicing in our group. What I'm here to talk about today is fusion of the sacroiliac joint. When I was trained many years ago, when we found somebody had pain in the SI joint, we would send them for an injection, maybe some physical therapy. Surgery was never considered, and we never saw these patients back because we didn't really have an option of treating them. Some orthopedists would treat them, but we wouldn't. And over time, especially with more and more lumbar fusions being performed in the United States, we're finding that once you fuse the lower back, that some of the stresses are transferred to the sacroiliac joint and that people start having breakdown and degeneration of that joint. In June of 2016, I had my first major back surgery. It was successful, but I still had, from the moment the surgery was over, I still had low back pain in the same areas that I had been telling them about for years. And I had gone for pain management. They had been giving me injections in the SI joints and other areas of my spine. But everything was gone except the low where the SI joints are. With Mrs. Woodford, uh, she'd had a lumbar fusion, and she did well from that part of the operation, but even right after surgery, she was still having pain in the sacroiliac joints. They said that was just post-op pain, which is something I would have told her to wait and see if it goes away. When it didn't, and then she finally got a pain doctor to treat her conservatively for this with some success, but only temporary success. And a lot of these people have been put off by other doctors, because frankly, most doctors either don't know about SI pain or they frankly don't think it's a diagnosis and they don't treat it and so they get bounced around from pain physician to chiropractor to neurosurgeon to orthopedic surgeon and it takes them sometimes months or years to get treated. I did massage, physical therapy, water aerobics, any kind of walking, you know, until it got to the point where I couldn't lift my leg, I couldn't lay down, I would have to sleep in a chair. A zero gravity chair because I could not lay flat, couldn't sit very long. There's so many things I couldn't do before. I couldn't even go to a movie and sit through a whole movie or just walking anywhere. I never knew when my legs were going to give out. I'd be walking along feeling just fine, no indication, no pain, no anything. My leg would just give out and I'd fall. So it makes you very apprehensive about uh, going anywhere that you're going to be walking for a long distance. It, got, it was very debilitating. I could not I couldn't function anymore, so I was forced to have to do something about, about my back problems. It's pain not in the middle of the low back, but a little bit off to midline, upper buttock. Uh, it can radiate into the buttock, even into the upper thigh or around into the groin pain. It can mimic a lot of other pains, hip problems, piriformis syndrome, just muscular back pain. Uh, a pinched nerve in your back, so sometimes it's a little hard to discern. It's more of a, you rule out all the other problems to rule it in. The doctor who did my first surgery was the one who told me there was a surgical option for it. The product that I use to fuse the sacroiliac joint is the iFuse, and the reason I use it is it's been out there longer than any other product. It's been placed in the most number of patients, uh, and the papers show quite a high level of efficacy when we place this implant. I was so pleasantly surprised because it really was not a difficult surgery to recover from at all. Once the three uh, devices are placed across the SI joint and it's had a, a chance to fuse, they can pretty much go back to whatever they want to do over the course of time. About maybe a quarter mile I started with the walker right away and then, you know, a little longer, a little longer. and. Eventually no walker and then a cane. We see them back at two weeks to take the staples out, then at six weeks to see how they're doing. Usually at that point we release them. Dr. Savage explained to me what the eye fuse was, showed it to me, showed me on the on the spine and, and where the SI joints were and exactly what the procedure was going to be, and explained to me how long the recovery was going to be and and everything through the whole procedure. So I felt very comfortable with him. I did not feel intimidated by him at all, and I thought he spent a lot of time with me, and I appreciated that. It's been a while since I had it done, and I have no problems at all. I don't have any pain there. I don't take any medications. I can sit, lay down. <laughs> Whatever I want to do, I can do. I can garden again. I can do walking. I walk every day, a mile in the morning, a mile at night and I'm about ready to go back to water aerobics classes and do all the things that I really like to do that I have not been able to do for a very, very long time. To anyone who thinks they're suffering from SI joint pain is more than welcome to call our office. So we take self-referrals. They can talk to their, lo their local doctor and they can refer them. 
Uh, but even if they haven't had a lot of treatment, willing to see them up front and steer them in the right direction, again, leaving surgery for last. I would definitely recommend having it done, and I would not push it off as long as I did.